Oz. And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, rock cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hook Up is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up, and Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up, Pete Gray and Rock Cod Rick Maxa. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up. I'm Pete Gray with Rock Cod Rick Maxa. is not here today. He is on his way to Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska for our annual Father's Day special Kingfisher Charters trip. He's going to have a great time up there. Probably catch a lot of fish, too. Hey, we have a figging of fish. We have the scientific fi- scientific fisherman in the studio, Dr. Larry Allen. It's been a while since we've had him, so we're going to learn a lot today. You stay tuned. Southern California's sport fishing voice is Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 10 Night. The new Shimano Torium HG is here, and you'll be able to experience this fantastic reel now at your local Shimano dealer. The new Torium is up to 30% smaller than the previous generation, but still has the same line capacity. The smaller S compact body design and one-piece die-cast aluminum frame provides more rigidity and lighter weight. Torium now has EI surface treatment and is tested up to 700 times the corrosion resistance of past models. The new Shimano Torium HG is not only better on the outside, the inside is amazing with a cross carbon drag providing up to 24 pounds of drag pressure from a star drag reel it has a sealed roller clutch and 6.2 to 1 brass gears the machined aluminum handle has a larger knob to make it easy to crank in the big fish the new lightweight aluminum spool gives you better casting and control available in three sizes the torium hg is the next evolution in compact rigid and powerful saltwater star drag reels get it now at your local shimano dealers Great boats, free parking, and a fully stocked tackle shop. Just a few of the reasons Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top charter boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Eclipse, Apollo, Outer Limits, Pacific Star, El Gato Dos, Alexis Pride, Privateer, Tribute, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half three-quarter and full-day trips available. Check out the full-service tackle store at Seaforth Sport Fishing. And it's all run by fishermen for fishermen. 1717 Quivera Road, just off Mission Bay Drive in Mission Bay. Book online at SeaforthLanding.com. My Angler H2O. I will never use that fakey fluorescent pink bait or drag my hula popper through the mud. I will outmaneuver drought-exposed stumps, rocks, and submerged station wagons and outsmart the ravenous river otter. I will save water by taking shorter showers for higher lakes, and I will always, always wear my life jacket. What's your H2O? Tell us at BoatCalifornia.com. The California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways reminds you to wear it, California. Summer has finally arrived, bringing warmer waters our way. And you know what that means. The offshore fishing this season could be one of the best ever. And speaking of best ever, have you seen the new 2015 Ford F-150? It's the most advanced F-150 ever. Ever, which is even more good news for fishermen. One of my favorite features is the available 360-degree camera. It lets you see everything around you, which really comes in handy when you're trying to launch on a crowded dock. It's also the first truck ever to be built with military-grade aluminum alloy. That means the new F-150 is up to 700 pounds lighter to accelerate faster and stop quicker. It also hauls more and tows more. And get this, it does it all more fuel efficiently. I highly recommend taking one out for a test drive. The new F-150 is the best thing to happen to fishermen in San Diego since the barbed hook. So stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Hook up! Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Marty 1090. Pete Gray here. As I said, Rock Cod Rick Max is on his way to Sitka, Alaska for our Kingfisher Charters trip. Uh, it's going to be a great trip, and I know there's going to be a lot of happy, happy anglers going up there because... King salmon fishing has been good, and uh, they're going to catch a lot of big halibut and rockfish and all kinds of good stuff. So be anxious to hear the reports next weekend from Rick. Hey, we have a great guest in the studio. It's been a while. Our good buddy, Dr. Larry Allen. We call him the scientific fisherman. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, Pete. Hey, nice to be back. Great to have you back. And, uh, man, you have been a busy guy. Of course, you're still 
the big guy up at Cal State Northridge, right? It's uh, the, yeah, I'm the chairman of the Department of Biology, so I got 40 faculty that I have to ride my, herd on. It's my like, goodness, you know, herding cats is what I thought. <laughs> How big is Cal State Northridge now? It's the biggest CSU. We got. About 40,000 students. 40,000 yeah. students. Yeah. Wow. That's that's amazing. Big and campus, and we've been growing. So Yeah. yeah. And b- biology is a big department, and especially uh, you kind of do a lot in the fisheries world. Well, yeah. We, we actually have a really strong marine biology program at, at Northridge, and uh, I have been working on, you know, sport fish, you know, for a long time there. I, yeah. I decided I, I spent a lot of time. Uh, dragon nets in my early years, you know, for fish. And then I decided I just wanted to start catching them on rod and reel again. So uh, but throughout the last 25 years, we've been working on the sport fish that, that everybody likes to catch for here in, in the uh, coastal waters. And the cool thing about you is that you are a fisherman. You were showing me pictures of uh, big trout from Pyramid and uh, oh, yeah. oh, talking yeah. about catching uh, uh, offshore species and inshore species and everything, yeah. right? I've, I've pretty much caught them all. Yeah, I, my dad and grandfather started me at five and been on the ocean pretty much ever since the reason i basically became a, a marine biologist and a, and a fish you know, specialist specialist so let me ask you this i mean there seems to be a lot of people kind of going into the anti-fishing world and in the and and then coinciding in the scientific world about anti-fishing or anti-sport fishing in, in particular do you run into a lot of that at at, at school uh i don't Personally, uh, we you know we see it. We we uh, you know there are colleagues of mine that that would rather hug trees than <laughs> <laughs> you know than than face the reality that you know that this is a you know fishing is is a is it's a resource. Yeah. Fishes are a resource, and they're used uh, for food. They're used for recreation, uh, and it's part of the 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 hunting culture. I right. think in in human society. And uh, I don't believe that a hook and a fish is the same as a hook and a Labrador retriever. Let's just put that yeah, out. yeah, it's pretty We've ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, pretty ridiculous yeah. indeed. Um, and, and properly managed, of course. Absolutely, sustain it. Managed for sustainability. That's yeah. that's what I'm all about. Yeah. And and when we see problems, we we say something. You yes. know, the, the the basses, the the calico and the sand bass regulations that came through. You know. About three years ago, I, I had a fairly large part in that, and it cost me some friendships, I think. But I, I think it's now, this is the uh, bag limit of five and 15, 14 inches. Now we're seeing a fishery that is really, really going to be great in the next two yeah. or three years. And, and I, myself, too, was very, very in favor of that five fish and the 14 yeah. inches. And now, and you know, a lot of screaming and yelling about it, and, oh, my God, we're going to put us out of business, and and everything, but we've seen the results. Well, the, the results are we knew it would work. It just it's just a bitter pill to, to swallow. Yeah. And now you catch five fish, and the fillets are, are way more than the ten fish you caught before. Absolutely, yeah. and you get to catch a lot more fish. Yeah, and catch and release fishery. Yeah, and, such and yeah, and they're all nice fish. Fish with bass with shoulders, we call them. Yeah. And now yeah. speaking of fish, have you worked with Lyle Belquist on his work? Lyle, Lyle's a friend of mine. I've known yeah. him since he was a undergrad at, at in Long Beach and back at the Fred Hall shows all those years ago. So oh, he, sure. he he's a good he's he's a friend. I uh, I collaborate with him, uh, help him any way I can. He's doing he's doing some great stuff with the collaborative fisheries research. Yeah, program. he has, and he, yeah. and he's done some amazing work with. Uh, Collect, you know, showing how healthy that calico bass population is. Right. Yeah, is. and and you know, c- you know, comparing it to the to the protected area at La Jolla that hasn't been fished for a long time. Yeah. Uh, versus you know outside and and it's getting pretty good everywhere. Yeah. Like, uh, that's the good thing. Is that's that now the good that we're now, now when we can show that the protected areas are just as good as the areas that we're we're fishing. Well, I that was the original idea is that these protected areas would seed the other areas. I, I don't. Know, it's probably still too early to show that directly, sure. but we've known for a long time. I've even had students that worked on it at uh, Catalina at the Wrigley Marine Science Center, that reserve that's been there for a long time. We know that if you close an area to to, to hook and line fishing, commercial fishing, you get a lot bigger fish and a lot bigger calicos and a lot bigger sheephead. Those were the two the two main ones. Our so we know that, but we didn't really know. What kind of seeding effect there would be around it, you yeah. know, besides the spillover? Uh, when calico bass are in a um, population uh, like a marine reserve, yeah, um, 
the adult calicos, the, the mature calicos, are they staying right there or are they moving around? They're pretty much staying there. Staying they, there. You know, most of the tagging work has been done on, on calicos or kelp bass uh, um, and, bar, and sand bass is that they don't move very far. They, the sand bass will migrate out to their, to their spawning aggregation areas. But it's, you know, average fish is moving five kilometers, you know, so uh, it's the larvae that get up into the currents. That's, and what, and that's, that's what spreads them around. Yeah. So these are all... Uh, uh, egg broadcast spawners, they release their eggs and, and, uh, and sperm into the water. The larvae develop in the, as part of the plankton, and they can go anywhere. Uh, we're finding a lot of them return to the native grounds because of current patterns and, and things like that. But they can go elsewhere, and that's kind of the, the main thrust of the whole MPA system. And I have maintained that we've never really shown that that happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it Anyway, this the whole MPA thing was a highly politically charged Very process. Politically. Yeah. And so, are you in favor of MPAs? Are you uh, mixed about it? I'm What's mixed. The, I'm yeah. I'm not a big fan because I didn't think we had done the, the research, the, the basic empirical research necessary to show that they were going to benefit us like yes. people thought. There's been a lot of modeling. There's their modeling. It should work, but. Uh, you know, you've got to have you've got to have empirical data and yeah. and ground truth these things. So that's reason that's the reason I was kind of lukewarm on it. I was on the scientific advisory team about that, and I was one. Of, I was eighteen. I was there were two fishermen on that, and we were there were two there of were twenty 18? of us. Well, two, two of 20. twenty. Two of twenty. And the rest were all what? Well, Just, they were. Uh, uh, well, there were some fisheries guys, you know, the you know Hillborn and those people that that had the you know that no, that had the research perspective, but it was a lot of ecologists, a lot of uh, resource agency people. Yeah, they were trying to be fair across the board. Yeah, and it really gets down to it uh, in terms of politics. Uh, sport fishermen have only a certain number of votes, right? Yeah. So, so what I tried to do is maintain. Uh, sanity. That's, yeah, that's what I tried okay. to do. Well, they, yeah. yeah, and the and the and the process itself, like you say, was so political. Well, it was it was it was a fait accompli. The yeah. legislature said you will do this. Yeah, you know, and so I thought we just needed to get the best situation possible for the resource. Yeah, and in my mind, that was for the resource and the people who use the resource. Yeah, yeah. indeed. So we got we got. Uh, my take on it is we got. A lot of small ones spread very far apart, and that's really the best that we could hope for as sport fishermen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, it's not good. It's not. It's not an ideal situation. But uh, especially here in Southern California, I mean, we lost some areas that are very key and critical to us. But yet, we regained a lot of good area too. Well, yeah, re- you regained and you found other areas that hadn't right. normally been fished. And you know, maybe in the long run, it's all. It's going to be better anyway. Yeah. It's, it's going to add to the sustainability, but my one of my biggest problems with it was that they were doing this. It was it was the answer rather than regular uh, time honored management practices like increasing the size limit, right? <laughs> that kind of stuff. Right. We know that stuff works, and it yeah. does. And so, the combination of those things is is uh, probably going to give give us a a sustainable fishery in the future. And we can't overlook the gillnet ban in 1994. It was no the question. single best move we ever made in California to to increase the sustainability of our nearshore resources. No question. Look at the comeback of the white sea bass, the white halibut. Sea bass. And the giants. We're now working. My lab is working on giants, of, I sorry, a.k.a. black sea bass. Okay. I don't call them black sea bass. The proper name is giant sea giant bass. Giant sea bass. Yeah. Uh, they're not black. And they're not sea bass. They're so, not sea bass. Yeah, no. What are they? They are wreckfish. They are related to the wreckfish of the Atlantic that are a, a big sport uh, sport fish and food fish. That was, they're deep deep ocean deep ocean reef fishes. You know, and they get they get fairly big. So wreckfish would be the same as a group uh, like a not, Florida grouper. No, they're not groupers. No, they're so not gro- groupers. groupers are groupers, and yeah. they're very different from the giants. They are. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, they're they're not very closely related at all. They just look a lot like them, and they act a lot like them. Interesting. So tell us about your work with black sea bass. I mean, everybody's thinking, you know, because we're catching them now and stuff, Mm. that they've really made a comeback. You stunned me this morning with the numbers. 
and how small the numbers are in Southern Well, California. we have been able to work on them, and it's the first time in my lifetime that there, there's been enough of them to do something about. And so we're actually going out and finding out where the babies are, and we're, we're counting them around Catalina. We're looking at their behavior and a variety of other things. But one of the things that we started doing five years ago was that I started uh, buying heads from uh, fish markets. You know, they... Uh, commercial uh, commercial landings are, are are still legal. One fish per trip. One fish per trip. One giant a commercial yeah, net. One giant sea bass or black per per boat. How, how do they get away with that? Well, Why that, does fish that, and game allow that? Well, Come that's on. that's in the law that was written though, when the moratorium came into being in 1982. They originally had two fish uh, per trip. Now it's one incidental take. So they can be landed. They can be marketed. And so I, I decided that I would just start buying the heads if they had them, because most of the time, uh, 150 years of giant, uh, I'm sorry, giant sea bass fishery, I still yeah. have to, uh, is uh, they were landing these huge fish without their guts or their heads, you know, because these take up too much room in, on the boats. Sure. So we didn't learn anything about them. We didn't know anything about them, because fishery scientists need guts and gonads and heads and otoliths and things like that. So I started getting these. We got up to, to 64 of them uh, and started sectioning the otoliths, and we had now determined that the largest or the oldest giant sea bass, giant sea bass, black sea bass that we know of is 76 years 76 old. 76 years yeah. old. They were thought to maybe be over 100, you know. Yeah. But, but really, most of the really big ones, about 500 pounders, we estimate from the size of the head, uh, are between 60 and 76 years old. Wow, that's pretty yeah. amazing. So not very many of them. But we also were able, with those skulls, to take tissues and do genetic do genetic assays of them. And one of the things that we were able to find out is that they're, they're very low genetic diversity. They look like they went through a huge bottleneck and because of the low that, catches. They, they over collapsed in 1934 in California waters. 1934. 1934 as they fished them out of California waters. Fish, so that was, the, was it commercial as well as sport fishing? That was mainly commercial. Commercial fishing. Yeah, the days when, you know, Zane Gray and, and uh, Holdridge and these guys were out there at Catalina in the 1890s catching them with, with uh, Rod you know, Rod, well, Rod and Reel. Sort Before of. that, with rope, you yeah. know, with parachute cord. Uh, and then the, the gill netters. Discovered them in the in the teens in the nineteen oh, tens and by thirty four they had virtually fished them out. Yeah, yeah, and so we have very low catches in California. Uh, most of the fish were landed between nineteen thirty four and eighty and nineteen eighty two from Mexico uh-huh. going down, and then the Mexico uh, you know banned us from taking taking them in Mexico. So then it really fell off, and then they they cleared the moratorium for for fishing, recreational fishing in 1982. So you cannot recreationally catch a a giant sea bass, black sea bass, in Mexican waters. Oh, you can. You can. No, but American fishermen, commercial fishermen can't go down there. Commercial fishermen. Yeah, commercial fishermen. But recreational fishermen. They can't land them from there, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 of course, it is a moratorium here in the United States, so in California. In California. What is, what is the, um, what is the area that they cover? Where do we see black sea bass, giant sea bass? Well, they're they're you know, coastally oriented, re- rather deep most of the year. Looks like they come up. Uh, we're seeing the spawning aggregations in the summer now in about fifty to seventy feet of water, so they're fairly deep, uh, almost you know fairly cooler water fishes, and they do have aggregations and aggregation sites that we've heard of historically. Uh, Mike Domeyer, when he was with the Flager Institute, was working on them and tagging them. Uh, we don't uh, we don't have that data uh, available to us at this point, but uh, they are. Uh, there's a you know Anna Kappa, uh, uh, Catalina has a couple of aggregations we now know ocean sites. We know where they are, and that's where they used to fish them. Mm-hmm. And they fished them most heavily in the summer when they're spawning and they're aggregated. And, and whenever you fish an aggregating Species, one that aggregates to spawn in particular, you like can, a sand bass, like sand bass, you can <laughs> really you can really decimate the populations yeah. quickly, and that's what happens recreationally. Recreationally, probably over many many years, I think the sand bass 
had that happen yeah. in, uh, in 2003, 2004. Uh, they're starting to come back. We also yeah. had cold water. Yeah, we had a lot yeah. of cold water between 99 and, and 2010. We only had one condition. Year. Yeah, the condition. So the the whole for recruitment whole, for development of the babies. Yeah, you were st- it staggered me in the in the numbers of black sea bass, giant sea bass, um, from. Anacapa Island to San Felipe and around the Baja Peninsula, 2,000 miles of coastline. How many fish do you think well, are in that? Genetically, well, there's a test we can run based on the diversity of, of uh, the well, the nucleotide sequences. Uh, it's called effective population size. You can calculate that, and it's really low for giants. Uh, right. So one of the estimates were, was 160. We 160 think it, fish. Yeah, 160, but maybe 500 is a better estimate with the Still, with the air. 500, 500 spawning adult females. That's not very many. No, yeah, so, so that's spawning adult females. Yeah. And what's the? Uh, are there equal number of of males? Probably. Well, there's more males probably because males. we're seeing. Of course, they pair off. We do know that they they form pair bonds when they spawn. They do. Which is very different from groupers. <laughs> uh, and uh, But if you get it in an area where there's a lot of them, there's a lot of smaller males wandering around and uh, booming at each other. They, yeah. they produce sound and stuff. So. Booming. Yeah, Explain they boom. That. Yeah. Well, they have swim bladders. They have very large swim bladders. And we now know that they have muscles on their ribs. And their ribs are highly pivot. They pivot, you know, in the sockets on the vertebra. And they can, with these, uh, with these muscles, they simply contract them and they... They thump the drum. They thump their swim bladder. It's like a drum. It's like a drum. It's yeah. like, that's what, you know, we've got hydrophones out there. We're trying to isolate and lo- localize it. Get the sound. But the guy, my... Me, my maybe a new ringtone for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Yeah. <laughs> but my my divers will be out there, and they'll be observing, you know, pairs or whatever, and they'll hear a boom in the water, and they'll turn around. There usually will be a male charging them. Really? Yeah. Oh, they get that aggressive. Yeah, they get the males get pretty aggressive. I'll be darned. Yeah. Wow. Well, as you can hear, we have a lot of great information for you today, and uh, Larry is not only a great uh, a scientist, uh, a great guy to, for us to have on our side. Uh, he's a really good fisherman too, and has done a lot of fishing. So you want to join us? Toll free eight seven 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 nine two ten ninety. One line open there right now. Eight seven 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 nine two ten ninety, and Local lines are full, but keep trying at 858-457-1090. 858-457-1090. Hey, one lucky caller today is going to win that AFCO Performance Package worth uh, well over 100 bucks today. The AFCO Performance Shorts, the Performance Shirt, and the AFCO fish Face Mask to cover your face and uh, keep you safe. When we come back, more from Dr. Larry Allen. More Let's Talk Hookup right here on the Mighty 1090. She visited it all at Dana Landing in Mission Bay. It's truly the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. Looking for a fishing charter? Dana Landing had you covered with several boats, including the new Blackjack, perfect for two to four anglers, and the Impulse that will carry up to six anglers in comfort and style. Dana Landing has a huge tackle shop with everything you need to go fish bay bass, tuna, or marlin, plus expert anglers on staff to help. They even have Mexican and California fishing licenses and reel repair. The Deli at Dana Landing is a local's favorite with all the food, ice, and beverages you need. When it comes to freshwater tackle, East County Bait and Tackle is the spot for a great day on the lake. The ultimate in rods and reels, the latest freshwater lures, and live bait. ECBT has a staff second to none when it comes to sharing their passion for fishing. ECBT is at the end of the 67 freeway on Maple View in Lakeside, and Dana Landing is right across from SeaWorld next to the Dana Launch Ramp in Mission Bay. Check DanaLanding.com for more details. For over five decades, Lee Palm Sport Fishing has set the standard in long-range fishing that they pioneered long ago. The Red Rooster 3 sets a new standard of excellence. The Red Rooster 3 is one of the most modern, quiet, and fastest long-range vessels in the fleet. They have handpicked the finest crew to make your trip a memorable one. The Red Rooster 3 offers trips from 3 to 18 days and runs year-round to the best fishing spots on the planet. Ride the Red Rooster 3 once and you'll be back again. Call the Red Rooster 3 at 619 224 38 57 or see them on the web at redrooster3.com. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now 18 stores throughout Southern California and three in San Diego County. 
Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. When it comes to tackle storage, it's got to be Flambeau. With several new products designed just for anglers, check out the new H2O Soft Tackle System. Now available in three sizes, complete with tough tainers. The finest plastic tackle storage containers with Z-Rust, which has proven to be the best protection against rust and corrosion. Flambeau Tackle System's new AZ Tackle System has flexible designs to match your type of fishing. And for travel, protect your rods with a tough bazooka rod carrier. Flambeau, available at Turner's Outdoor. Outdoorsman, Sport Chalet, and other fine tackle retailers. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. Uh, fascinating show here with Dr. Larry Allen, the scientific fisherman. And here's a place that we all want to be right now, and that is Rancho Leonero in Baja's East Cape. We have John Ireland live from Rancho Leonero. Buenos dias, John. Good morning, Pete, Rick, uh, Dr. Allen. Everything's morning. good down here. Yeah, I know. It really got beautiful right the day I left on Thursday. Uh, right? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's still recovering. You know, the water really turned. One thing that block did was turn the water over. It's still actually much cooler than it had been. 79 inside, 83 outside, which is, for this time of year, still a little bit warm. But compared to what it was, it's probably 5 degrees uh, less. So, and it's been, and it's, and it's helped the fish. And the fish is finally cleaning up and uh, are actually picking up. And the water's cleaning up. Uh, what, the warmest water is still... 85 degree water, still about 85, 86 degree water, still about 40 miles out. <clears throat> and the guys that are rolling out there are picking up the big tuna. There's, I think Felipe Valdez picked up a 200 pounder uh, two or three days ago, about 40 miles off, just straight off the front. You know, it's hard to tell exactly when you're that far out which you have to turn up, but it's about due north off the ranch seems to be where the best are. A lot of schools around, kind of like when we went out, Pete, but, uh, but uh, it's picked up some, and uh, much more fish. The, our boat went out yesterday and picked up seven, I think, uh, between 20 and, and I'd say, 30 pounds. So I'm all about the same size. <clears throat> a lot of striped marlin mixed in, a lot of blue marlin, too, with this warmer water. Uh, inside's been slow. Some of the boats are doing well on the rooster fish and some not. We were down to uh, put the boats out this morning, and the, and the dorada were feeding right up against the beach, chasing the sardine, which is good news, right up almost on the sand in front of us. Pretty cool to watch. A lot of dorada around, not real big ones, but I mean lots of dorada around, you know, five to ten pounders. And a lot of people are releasing the smaller ones, loads of dorada, which bodes well for the next couple of months. They go fast. So overall, it's been kind of a recovering week, but uh, much better fishing than last week and picking up for sure. Wow. You know, it's going to take a little bit, but I'll tell you what, in spite of relatively slow fishing, although our tournament ended up, you know, basically being a one day tournament. I talked about it yesterday. Huh. There were some pretty darn good scores. Blue Marlin, nice tuna, and there were tuna to be caught. And, 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 and the inshore fishing was disappointing, of course, because of that, you know, roll over, over the water. But that's going to come back, right? Yeah, and it has already in, in, a, in a big way. Like I said, I watched this morning. It's much, much cleaner. And so, like I say, a little cooler. But, uh, you know, if I were coming down to the ranch, uh, this coming week would be the week I'd want to come, you know, because these these so-so reports just indicate it's time that we're really time to kick it, in or overdue. It, it's to time to go down to Rancho Leonero. And yeah, I right. know you're busy. Uh, and the ranch, by the way, John, looks beautiful. Food is just um, the best it's ever been. With that new kitchen and the people you have in there, and and it still has that old world Baja hospitality that you always tout. It's just a wonderful place, and I just can't wait to go back. It, you know, it, and I know that the people that did brave the storm last weekend for yeah. our tournament, you know, they, that's worth saying. We got we have some real storm campers. Yeah. Some of the gang really really hung in there, and I appreciate them. Thank them. 
And, and, Don't forget next year. Yeah, for sure. And 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 they had a great time. You know, I got down there on Monday because I canceled my flight on Sunday, and 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 everybody was just having a great time. And 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 you know, I was like, hey, where you been, man? We've been having fun without you. So, uh, yeah, you know, it was great that John, you know, lose son won the won the tournament. That was kind of appropriate as well. Yeah, absolutely, probably. Tom and <laughs> Tom and John and those guys, and they cleaned up that day. Man, they had a really. Really, really great day, uh, including a 300-pound blue that they released and uh, lots of tuna and, 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 and got fish your new boat, which I talked about yesterday, which is uh, – that boat is a bargain for the East Cape, I'll tell you what. Yeah, it is. The it's El Jefe. Price. What do you charge, 850 a day for that boat? 850 So far, we, we might raise it next year, but this year we're charging 850 for it. Yeah. Compared to most of the boats around it. It's literally got it. It's got air conditioning. It's got everything on it. it. It's a cool boat, fast boat. It's a comparable boats are well over a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars a day. Yeah. So and we don't want to. Yeah, it's, it really is. There's, you don't leave anything on the beach. It's a, it's a good boat. I like to fish. The problem is when I price it that low, I got. I, I have to reserve it myself. You have to block out days for yourself because yeah, it's a popular boat. Plan. Yeah, that wasn't part of the plan. Yeah, yeah well, it's, it's a nice boat, and uh, it, uh, the whole experience at Rancho Lanero is just wonderful. Well, if we want to come down there, we have our dates on our Let's Talk Hookup tournament for next spring. Very, very popular tournament. So if you want to go, make your reservations, book your favorite room, book uh, your favorite boat, and uh, now would be the time. It's uh it's uh, June 4 through 8, 2016. Uh, how do we get a hold of you if we want to book a room this month, next month, or next year? Hey, speed 800-646-2252. Check out our website, ranchwilliamarrow.com as well. All right, John. Thanks for the great hospitality and uh, keeping no, that ranch you. old world Baja. It sure is. And, uh, and you know, actually, we have to keep the, the food good. You know, when the fishing goes bad, we food at least yes. everybody had a great time uh, everybody had a good time indeed and the margaritas were still really good even though the <laughs> wind was blowing <laughs> the our bacon, I tell you, for sure. all right john yeah, nice Thank to hear you. from you thanks a lot for the call this morning appreciate that from rancho leonero it was god that have you been there, Larry? Oh yeah, yeah, it's a oh, great yeah. spot. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah well, gone yeah. there doing field research. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, that too. Yeah, yeah that yeah, too. That too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if the wind blows, you would stay in the cantina. Yeah. What's what's to complain yeah, about? There, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's still a beautiful sp- uh, place to look it's at. Great. Yeah, it's, it's a great place. It, it is a good spot for sure. Hey, let's go ahead and jump to those jam-packed phone lines. They want to talk to Doctor Allen here. Let's start up with Don in Woodland Hills. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Pete. Good morning, Dr. Allen. Thank you for taking my call today. Thanks for joining us. Hey, um, Pete, first, um, really a comment. Um, had had the opportunity to do some travel this week, and I always like to download the archives and listen to it. And you uh, recently put up uh, a Del Marsh uh, show from probably five, six years ago. Really great. Thank you for much, so much for the archives. It's it's a great way to keep myself entertained while I'm traveling and can't do any fishing. But the Del Mar show was really special. Thank the you. The Del Marsh, much. yeah, that was our tribute to Del Marsh, which uh, happened just three days before his his death uh, a few years ago, with uh, a lot of great figures and a great characters that were a part of Del's life. It's on our archives, like you say. And I want to thank our buddy Adam, our engineer here. He's he's in charge. He's our archive chief. Here and does a great job. Thank him for putting those up there. And uh, those are available on our YouTube channel as well as our archives page at hookup1090.com. But if you want to hear the, the relive some of that great moments with Dell, that's a good show to listen to. Thanks a lot for that. Yep, Dr. Allen, um, I wanted to get your take on uh, you know all the recent dialogue and, and especially on any research that you're uh, aware of on the uh, bluefin tuna population here off of the. Uh, the Eastern Pacific, and um, you know, do you, what's your thought on you know reducing the limits both commercially and also for the sport fishermen? Well, I pelagic species aren't really my thing. I, I try to read up on them. Uh, the recent you know, the closure last year in Mexican waters, I thought it was a little premature, but I, I think it's always a good idea to limit the commercial catch because they can do so much more damage with. With these huge nets they use. Uh, uh, the other part of me, you know, is I'm a sustainability guy, so w- why take more than you need uh, as a recreational fisherman? You know, I caught a 60 pound bluefin a few years ago, and that's all I needed the whole day, yeah. you know. It was, so it, it, it kind of, uh, I, I, it's, it's, it's certainly not going to hurt to, to, you know, conserve at this point, even if there's a lot more of them than we think there are. 
the thing about bluefin is that they are northern. These this stock is a northern Pacific stock. It goes to Japan. It yeah. comes back. Uh, there is some evidence or belief that there may be a, a, a more local eastern Pacific uh, population around Guadalupe, and it goes up and down. I don't really know. Uh, the genetics are kind of mixed on that. But these are high seas fish, and they're being affected everywhere they go. and uh, Especially in Japan. In Japan, the high seas yeah. fleets, the, uh, the long lines. You know, Sure. It's not as bad as the days when they had those 100, 100 mile long drift nets. You know, yeah. they they banned those. But uh, basically, the uh, our our stocks go up and down uh, based on really worldwide catch types of things, sure. at least mm-hmm. uh, across the Pacific catch statistics. And the albacore is the same way, yellowfin the same way, except they're from the Eastern Pacific. Yeah. Now the one, one of the big difference between bluefin, I understand, and say yellowfin or albacore is their spawning maturity. They really don't spawn, I understand, until they get close to 100 pounds. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 The, the the good news is they grow pretty fast up, yeah. up to that. But yeah, they're you know, six seven years uh, versus say an albacore, I think four years. Four years. And, and the yellowfin is maybe what. Two three years. The elephant are quicker. Yeah, yeah they're quicker. They're you know they're, they do everything quicker. They're yeah. warmer water and everything. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you've got a, a big fish, big fish that's a little slower growing. Uh, you you know you want to want to be careful. You yeah, be careful indeed. All right. Hey thank Don, much. thanks a lot for the call this morning, and I might add too that I want to thank Gary Graham from uh, BD Outdoors uh, for initiating that whole Del Marsh. Uh, 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 archive on our, our webpage, hookup1090.com. Dell uh, uh, Del was such a great figure that, and, and thanks to Gary, he put a really great article, part one of part two on BD Outdoors there about Dell. You can search that on BD Outdoors, but the uh, article that, that Gary wrote is really fantastic and well worth looking at. Anyway, but that's uh, that's it's kind of fun to to, to relive a guy with uh, such a colorful history as our friend Dell. Did you know Dell? I did not. I yeah, no, he's he, one of a kind. Yes, indeed. Let's go ahead and jump back into the phones and talk to Brett in Huntington Beach. Brett, thanks for joining us on Let's Talk Hook Up. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Pete and Doctor. Uh, it's actually Fred. Oh, Fred. Hi, Fred. Yeah. Good morning. Um, I had a question for the doctor, but before I want to thank you for acknowledging uh, our cast today, yesterday, uh, our friend uh, Jerry Long, he was a fishing friend, travel friend, so forth. Indeed, Jerry, I will be missed, no doubt about it. So um, uh, the question was uh, black sea bass again, uh, interesting information. But uh, I was at Cedros last weekend, and a couple of around 50-pound fish were caught. I was curious how old those were. Maybe t- say a, maybe a hundred pounder, or maybe a white sea bass of fifty pounds. How old, what do you what ages do you think? Well, were? start with the blacks. Uh, the say fifty pounders. Those are probably f- four or five years old. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Are they spawning yet? No, no, no. They're not spawning until they're about one hundred and twenty pounds. Wow. Uh, well, we don't really know because we, you know, the guts are never with the fish. Sure. So. Uh, but we're, you know, there's other ways of indirectly measuring that. We're going to try to get into it. But uh, white sea bass are very different. A, a 50 pound white sea bass is 14. 14 years old. Yeah, it's old. a very different uh, yeah. growth profile. But they don't so. go to regrow to be 500 pounds and 76. No, no, years they get old. to be 94 pounds, and I had that one in my freezer for a while. Oh, you but did? Yeah. And how old was that 94 pounds? 20. 20 pounds. 20, actually, 20 actually, li- actually, I think Lyle actually aged that one, or yeah. Mike Shane, the other two. Yeah. I got everything but the otoliths on that fish, and it was in my freezer for a long time. And is that how you age the fish, is yeah. from the otoliths? Yeah, you take the otoliths, so you section them, and then you count the rings. Kind of like a tree. Yeah. Same tree ring tree. Same thing. Yeah. Chronology, yeah. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. though. Hey, uh, but uh, so those 50 pounders yet, yet have to be spawned. Probably not. They're bro- I'm, I think the earliest ones you're going to see spawning are maybe 80 pounds, 80 depending pounds. on how fast they've been growing and you know, the food and stuff. So yeah. uh, with the low population size like we have with giants since their demise in the 1930s, they may be maturing earlier. We don't know. And there are some estimates as, as early as 7 to 10 that they're starting to spawn. But uh, typically, it's 10 to 14 is what most people look at. They're kind of like humans. Yeah. You yeah. talked about um, about the genetic diversity and mm-hmm. how low that is. Yeah. How is that going to affect the population in the future? 
Well, it's not a good sign. I mean, basically, with the lack of genetic diversity is going to uh, hinder their ability to recover uh, to changes in the environment. And if we're getting warmer, yes. we're getting warmer, uh, we don't know. And they don't like warm. Well, they typically don't. No, we're finding the spawning uh, fish at Catalina last year, and it was a warm year last year, whether yeah. it was they call it an El Nino or not, it was warm. We're 60 feet. You know that's that's where they're spawning, and they didn't you didn't really find them any shallower, so they you know they may be moved north they may but I think they'll always stay kind of below the thermocline, but the the la- genetic diversity the lack thereof uh, inhibits a species a population's ability to re- recover from change and 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 drastic changes in the environment. Yeah. Indeed. Hey, Brett, thanks a lot. For, or Fred, excuse me. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Let's talk to Ron in Encinitas. Good morning, Ron. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk Hookup. Uh, yes. Uh, morning, Pete. Morning, Rick. Morning, Dr. Allen. Um, morning. Uh, my question for Dr. Allen, I think you previously answered the, the question that I had about uh, how you age the fish, but now I have some follow-up question on it. Um, for instance, you said that you cut the – obviously it has something to do with the inside. You say you cut, cut, them, cut open the oat. Otolings, is that how you pronounce it? Otoliths, that means uh, ear stone. Ear stone. Ear, ear stones, yeah. Ear stone, and yeah. you count the rings. What yeah. do the rings indicate? Uh, as far as, like, you know, like the trees, the rings indicate, you know, the, the changing, of, you know, the new seasons and all. Summer, winter, growth growth and non-growth seasons, usually, yeah. Okay. Well, when food is abundant, it, the otoliths get opaque because there's lots of other you know, proteins and largely proteins are being uh, uh, secreted into the matrix. And in the winter, when they're when they're colder, the the daily rings actually gets gets shorter and, and closer together. And, and you can and, actually see that. Oh yeah! Wow! Yeah. Under yeah. a microscope. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got pictures. You know. Wow. And, you know, uh, we actually take pictures of them, use a you know image processing, and we put dots on all of them that we just count the dots. Yeah. Wow, it's amazing! Cool. But getting into a giant sea bass skull, I think you the the caller meant something about it. that's not easy. These things are uh, it takes power tools to get power into, tools to get into these skulls. Normally, you just take a scalpel on a fish and s- scratch the bottom of its skull and pop it open. Yeah. These I have to take power tools, Dremels, Dremels and wow. circular saws to them. What's amazing too about the giant sea bass is uh, are the scales too. Yeah, scales can be. Thick and large, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're 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 pretty impressive. Yeah, you know, very impressive, large scales. And, are, are, yeah. Is there any aging that uh, you, on scales or no? Well, scales have been used for aging for a long time, but they they're really erroneous. Uh, the the larger and older a fish gets, because you know scales get replaced, scales the rings get so close together you can't distinguish them. Uh, that doesn't happen with otoliths. You can you can see the rings get a lot. Thinner as they go out, but you can still see them. It's still an incremental growth that's that's maintained. Every yeah. fish have otoliths. Yep. Every every single tuna. Yep. Sea, of course, they have, they have different sizes. Too. You know, the fish, yeah. the the more sonic, the more they they utilize sound in their behavior. The bigger the otoliths, typically. Uh, marlins and tunas don't use sound very much. They're vis- they're very visual. They have little tiny ones, little rice grain ones. Yeah. Yellowtail. I tried to find otoliths and yellowtail for. You know, two weeks. They, <laughs> they have would, them. They have them, yeah, they, yeah. But they're very hard to find. And, and you know, is that because they're so fast growing? Yeah, but they they just don't use sound. It's it's not a major sensory mode for them, so they they tend to be fairly small. The more pelagic the fish, the less mm. they use it. Probably. Yeah. Probably. So fish that are like rockfish. Uh, rockfish have bass, big ones. Big ones. Sea bass. Uh, G- uh, yeah. Giants. Those all have big yeah. ones because they're yeah. using. Yeah. Well, we sound. call white sea bass are croakers, and croakers in croakers. general have very large otoliths because they drum. They, yeah. You know. Did they, they use, use the the otoliths to drum? No, they hear. They hear. They hear. Okay. They use their swim bladders to drum and the, the muscles around the swim bladders. Okay. And Same the, as what you yeah, described I mean, with the yeah, giant sea yeah, bass. Uh, yeah, exactly. Sound carries six times faster in water than it does, so it's a really great sensory mode yeah. in, the, right. in the ocean. Ron, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. And when we come back, we're going to get a catch report, take more of your phone calls. We do have open line right now, 877 1090 You want to get through? There is your chance. You're listening to Let's Talk Hook Up, Southern California's sport fishing voice, right here on the Mighty 1090. 
Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the long range fishing experience. A spring eight day, summer five day, or a fly down, fly back, 11 day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality long range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top of the line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619 224 4764. Good morning, it's Whitney from Mammoth Lakes, California. Come on up, the water's fine, is what the Eastern Tier is touting. And in Mammoth Lakes, it's much more than just the water. This summer, our four lakes will be stocked with almost 16,000 pounds of healthy fighting trout. From fishing and biking to hiking and horseback riding, there's a legendary story waiting for adventurers of all ages in Mammoth Lakes. Start planning your next adventure at visitmammoth.com. That's visitmammoth.com. This is Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. For over 20 years, AFCO has been known for its traditional fishing shorts. We now will also be known for our new line of next-generation fishing and board shorts. Our new M82 tactical fishing shorts feature quick-dry, high-tech, two-way stretch fabric, zipper fly, six functional pockets plus pliers pocket, sublimated camo print, and our DWR finish so your short don't get stained. Also new to the AFCO line are the M25 Stingray board shorts. The Stingray board shorts feature new, quick-dry, four-way mind-stretch fabric, modern zipper fly, two technical high-cargo pockets with inverted zippers, silicone-printed draw cords, along with our DWR finish to repel stains. Both shorts are new to the AFCO line and come in a variety of colors and sizes. These technically advanced fishing and board shorts continue AFCO's long tradition of providing the world's finest fishing and board shorts. Check them out today at Better Shops Everywhere. It's time to talk about great gear from Shimano. And boy, where do you start when you're talking Shimano? So many great items available now from the the Therese rods, uh, the, Talus, the new Talus rods, and uh, all the great rods that they're producing today. Um, but I'll tell you what, that new Torium HG, I was checking it out at the Long Fin yesterday. Such an amazing reel, and we've been using it, our Shimano casting contest at the Ford dealers. It's amazing how well that casts and how few backlashes people are getting with that Torium HG. And then, of course, step it up. You go next level to the Trinidad A. Just an amazing performance reel with super power and a super corrosion resistance and just uh, a reel that is, is beyond compare when it comes to uh, star drag reels. So then you add in, of course, the flatfall jigs, the number one jig now for catching most anything in Southern California from tuna to calicos. Get it all at your local Shimano dealer or check out Shimano.com. For local and long-range fishing, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among seasoned or novice anglers. But Islander Charters is much more than great fishing. They also do incredible Guadalupe white shark diving trips as well as a schedule of kayak mothership trips. You need to check out the Islander on their website, islander-charters.com. The Islander is San Diego's leader when it comes to two- to five-day fishing. Watch the website for trips and adventures available. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islander-charters.com for all the details. XSRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You're listening to the home of the Padres. Oh my gosh, this club is playing fantastic baseball. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here, as I said, Rock God Rick on his way to Sitka right now to Kingfisher Charters. In the meantime, we have Dr. Larry Allen, the scientific fisherman, talking some great fishing here in Southern California and really fascinating discussions about uh, giant sea bass and all, all the age, aging fish and populations of fish and such like that. So we're going to continue that conversation right after the catch report today. And the catch report today is sponsored in part by Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Summer fishing means it's time to call Fisherman's Processing. You're on your private boat. Call them the day before you make the trip and make arrangements to drop your fish at their dock after hours. And they have a drop box. You get a tag, a lock combo, and you put your fish right in your slush bin. Next morning, your fish will be filleted and vacuum packed and ready to go. Check out all the details on their Facebook page, uh, Fisherman's Processing, or complete details on their website, Fisherman'sProcessing.com. Let's start up at Dana War Sport Fishing. Captain Brian Willie. Good morning, Brian. 
Hey, good morning. How are you guys doing hey, this morning? Doing great. What a beautiful day on the water today. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Hey, you know, we, we had a pretty good week up here. Uh, you know, the water's still not as clean as we'd like it, but, you know, we're seeing that good 64, 65-degree water. So I'm sure we'll see the, the color straighten out itself here a little bit this week, too. But uh, starting off close to the harbor, gosh, the Calcabasters has been really, really good for us. Uh, the fly line fishing along the kelp is just it's been ridiculous on either the anchovy or the sardine. Even some nicer great fish on the mackerel too, getting some uh, some some action there. The anchovy really though has been the key. You know, we we've, we've had some really good bait this week. The bait company's taken really good care of us and that anchovy, you know, you get to scoop it out over the side and it's just ridiculous watching the fish come up and react to that chum. So also getting them pretty good on the surface iron, the wax wing jigs and the hard jerk baits I and mean, the calca bass bites just been good. I think the last couple of days, you know, we've released over five hundred bass the last few days, so it's it's been really, really good bass fishing. We're seeing a few yellows in our accounts, too. You know, some fish coming along the kelp line. And, uh, you know, out on that kelp paddy stuff, we're still trying to keep tabs on that. We've even had a few sea bass in the mix this week, too, up uh, up in some of the, the kelpy areas, too. I know they had a heartbreaker last night on the twilight. They lost a 40-pound sea bass just before a gap last night. I don't know what happened. I think there might have been a, another line involved in that. But uh, they ended up losing that fish, so kind of a bummer. But, uh you know that, like I said, that kelp paddy yellow cell, we're still keeping track on that. And then, uh, the Fury's been out at San Clemente Island. He's had some really good yellow cell fishing over there and he's been able to round out his counts with some real good, uh, calc bass fishing as well as some good bottom fishing. And there's still some tuna sign out here. You know, we haven't really seen the blue fin close, but uh, yesterday our whale watch boat watched the big old spot of yellowfin come up crashing around on the dolphin at only three miles yesterday. So. What? What? It, yellowfin yeah, at three cool. miles? Yellowfin at three miles, so who knows? You know, it, so that's why we're hoping this water strains itself out a little bit. We get that clarity, we get some of that bait back in it, and uh, you know, I think we're we're off to a good start this week. So that's that's our hope. If you guys want to hop on a trip, we'd love to have you out with us. Phone number at the landing is nine four nine four nine six five seven nine four. Of course, on these local trips, guys, you can link us right through the West Hawk Cookup webpage of the banner app, Dane Wharf. You can save some money on a local trip, or you can uh, call the landing. Check us out online at danawarf.com. You bet. Yeah, that banner ad on the front page of Hookup 1090.com. You just click on it, and you save uh, a lot of money on half and three-quarter day trips. Yeah, they 15 20 bucks. I mean, yeah. So we're, uh, we're taking advantage of that Heck offer. yeah. Hey, Brian, thanks a lot. Great report. Sounds like time to go bass fishing. <laughs> time just to go fishing, right? Yeah, it's been good. So you never know. It, we're taking it day by day, and it seems like every day is getting a little bit better than the next. So we'll we'll take that for what it's worth. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, we'll talk to you next Sunday. I'll bet it'll be even better on the first day of summer. We're hoping. We're okay. hoping. Have a great week, guys. Thank you. You too. Thanks a lot. All right, surf guru Gundy Gunderson's on the line. Good morning, Gundy. Hey, what's going on? You are man. Tell us about that surf fishing. It's good, huh? All right. Well, last week uh, I think the last thing I was saying was that uh, when the sand crabs arrive. The Corbina bite takes off. Well, I guess that's why you call me the guru, Pete, because they showed up this week. See, you just knew it. Right? <laughs> that's it. Yeah, and really some terrific fishing. We got a we got a big fish they weighed, and I'll get to that. We'll start up north Santa Barbara. Hook, line, and sinker reported nice influx of halibut on the beaches up there. Anglers are throwing hard jerk baits, bouncing crocodiles, and scoring fish. You know, a lot of short fish, but some quality fish in there, too, up to 28 inches. East Beach has been the hot spot there. The perch bite also been very good, averaging 17 to 18 inch on the fish. That's you know that's pushing that two pound range. Real nice, small lucky craft. Gulf two inch sandworms working well. Cabazon bite real good in the rocks there. Fish to four and a half, taking the strip squid. And Wiley's reported sand crabs on the beach. And Saturday they weighed a five pound nine ounce corbina, taking it. Will Rogers. Oh, baby. that's a good one there. Just a beautiful fish, you know, and uh, they said that all of a sudden, man, they've really shown and they're starting to bite. Halibut action there's also been picked up, five-pound, eight-ounce fish checked in there, took a green and white blam. Stripers popped up in the South Bay. Between the piers there, Homosa and Manhattan, eight-pound fish taken on a gulp sandworm there, just soaking a bait, blind fish. Uh, the sand crab showed up off Newport. And the Corbina bite picked up there, too. Street, uh, the street jetties, river jetties, all holding good numbers of fish, and they're starting to bite. Hogan's reported a good calico bass bite off the rocks in Laguna Beach. The guys are rock hopping, and they're throwing X-wraps. They're throwing the Lucky Craft, uh, some of those big saltwater jerkbaits, throwing right in the foam and scoring some nice calico bass up to five pounds. 
The Corbina bite also took off along Capitol Bay beaches. Crabs are in. Uh, most of them are small and thirsty, and so some guys are using lugworms or fresh mussels or stringing a few of those crabs on, and they've been getting fish to three pounds. Pacific Coast reported crabs on the beach, good Corbina action, fish are biting on the incoming tide, averaging two to three pounds, and the spot fin have really been on the tear in the lagoons, off the beach, in Oceanside Harbor. Five pound, 12 ounce spot fin spot. leading their derby for the month there. Oh. Quality fish. And last week was a five pound, eight ounce was a nice fish. So there's some quality spot fin. I mean, we're talking about five pound models of just about everything in the surf, and it doesn't get much better than that. I'll tell you what, the surf fishing in Southern California is one of the best kept secrets here, right? Absolutely. Not a lot of pressure and nope. really some trophy fish in there. Absolutely. I mean, if you know, light tackle uh, fishing for quality fish. I had lots of elbow room, you know. I mean, it's 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 something special. It's something that we need to take care of. No doubt about it. Well, the guru himself, he predicted it. What's next week? What's going to happen next week? <laughs> I don't know, Pete. I, to be honest with you, I think I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gundy. We'll talk to you next Sunday. We'll see what happens. Great show. Guys. Us, all right. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. And that is our catch report today. It's sponsored in part by Terrafin Sea Surface Temperature Charts. Terrafin Charts give you the latest water conditions to help you catch more fish and save fuel. They're helpful year round, especially now, to find the best water conditions. Check out the new and improved Terrafin Mobile for your Apple or Android device. Terrafin, take it with you everywhere. You just download those charts, and you can put it on your iPad or on your uh, mobile device. It's uh, And it's all for the same low price. Check out Terrafin.com for more details. And I'll tell you what, when we were down in the East Cape, you could tell. You could just see that bubble of cold water that came in after the Hurricane Blanca there uh, passed through. It went from, if you look at the chart trend, it was nice and warm inside. The water rolled, and it was just like just green inside and you look at the 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 shoreline and it was just green cold water until you got out like 30 miles like john was saying mm -hmm. but that's what you use terrafin for find out where to go there it is right there that's where i need to be and that's the that's the deal so hey if you want to get through here's your chance 858-457-1090 858-457-1090 you have a chance to win that afco performance package and Talk to Dr. Larry Allen. Let's go ahead and jump back in the phones and talk to Luke in the Laguna Niguel. Good morning, Luke. Oh, good morning. Good morning, Dr. Allen and Pete. And we wish Rick well on his trip. Oh, I'll bet he'll catch some fish. What do you think? Uh, probably a couple. Yeah. I don't feel too bad for him. <laughs> hey, since you're talking about calico bass, I thought it'd be timely to give a fish report. And, and it is pretty impressive. Uh, the group I belong to, the Dana Wharf Rod and Reel Club, we, we focus on calico bass and primarily at San Clemente Island, and we fish on boats that get us in very tight, and it's competitive. We're looking for the big fish. Uh, the guy who has the big fish wears a shirt with a bullseye on the back, ah! and, <laughs> and, and we're after it. So we, we fished, uh, we just came back last night on a two-day with Bruce uh, 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 Smith on the Fortune, and we had a calico bass day that none of us can ever remember being better. Wow. Uh, we started with our leader having a, 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 a eight pound fish to beat. So that's oh. what we had caught earlier in the year. So we sat up in a spot, I can't tell you where. We fished bass for five hours straight. We started with thin bait. We ran out of how much we wanted to use. We switched over to, to live and dead squid. And when it was over in this five-hour bite, we had 18 fish at seven pounds. Wow. One fish at nine. And now the bullseye guy, who happens to be my son, Ryan, had a fish just over 10. Oh. We had 500 fish. Well, actually, it was 522 fish, I think, maybe a little short of that. And we only kept enough for lunch and a couple to take home. And none of the ones we kept uh, were over four pounds. We threw all the big boys back. Good for you. That's fantastic. Very huh? good. Very That's good. That's really great. And so, uh, as Larry and I have been talking about this this morning, because Larry was one of the leaders of the charge on this uh, five fish limit, 14 uh, inch uh, minimum. Um, 
What is it going to be like in a couple of years, Larry? It's, I mean, it, well, it's, it's going to be like San Clemente. Yeah. You know, I for the last ten years, I, if I want to catch big calicos, I go to San Clemente. And sure. That's this is what that this report what's just said. Happen. And the biggest one I've ever caught was a San Clemente. It was yeah. eight pounds. Sure, eight yeah. pounds. That's a yeah. nice fit. But it's going to be like that in a lot of places. Yeah, I think. So, so how, how me, old was that yeah. ten pound fish? Uh, I actually had a nine and a half with it. Was older. It was thirty five. 35 yeah, years old. Yeah, it was old. the oldest kelp bass on record, yeah. Really? Yeah. So the size doesn't necessarily – is it male, female? Well, that was a female spawned out. We figured she could have been 12 pounds at, yeah. uh, before she had spawned. 35, yeah. but they're yeah. old. Yeah, they my friend Jim, uh, Jimmy Sftanovich got that one. A legal 14-inch fish is how old? Uh, about eight years old. Eight years old. Yeah. Really? Okay. Seven or eight. Yeah. So, Luke, one thing that we noticed when we were over at Clemente on the uh, Islander kayak trip last week – um, on the front side, we uh, because of weather, we just stayed on the front. And I'm sure yesterday, I know it was grease calm, so you were somewhere different than that. But uh, uh, there was no kelp. But the calico bass fishing was the best I've seen, uh, fishing the area where the kelp was, right? Because mm-hmm. yeah. you know there's still some kelp down below there. Is that well, what you experienced, or were you fishing in the kelp? No. We, we In fact, you know, we've been doing this for 20 years, and we really focus on getting in tight, fish in the white water. Mm. And what, what we decided or concluded is without the kelp, we can now fish places we couldn't fish before. Yes. Yeah. And and the fish haven't gone anywhere. Yeah. Uh, and you get them when they want to go. I, we literally did not move for five hours, and it was as good at the end as it was at the beginning. Wow. Did any, wow. did any of those uh, fish have orange noses? Wow, now that's a tough question. <laughs> is that a spawn? Is that, that's, that's a male spawning coloration. It's a male Big spawning orange, coloration. orange to gold noses. Yeah. Oh, Nose. we had many. Well, I guess I was thinking of it as, as yeah, yeah, they did. And, well, and they're, they're spawning then. You probably got an aggregation. An of aggregation of spawners. Yeah. yeah, so when the, when the males have get a, a, like, a, like almost golden lips, right? Well, they get they, their whole snout turns uh, gold to orange. Really, and they get very, very black and white looking. Yeah. Besides we, that, yeah. we did have one oddity that I think is pretty odd. We uh, we were there two months ago with Bruce in the same area, the, the same spot, and our <laughs> big fish was a uh, uh, whatever our big fish was. We photographed it, and it had a tail that was that it had been dealt with when it was younger because it was just not right. Our big fish yesterday had the same tail, so we think it was the same fish. Wow, could interesting. Be. Yeah, be. very well could be. Hey, uh, that's a great report, Luke, and I know uh, Bruce on the Fortune is just a fantastic fisherman. I've fished with him before. I love fishing with Bruce. He is hardcore and knows how to catch the big ones, right? Yeah. Yep. All right, Luke, appreciate the report this morning. That's, how would you That sounds like a place we need to be. Larry. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had pretty good days at, at San Clemente, yeah. but not in 500. No, but. that's a lot of fish. <laughs> that's a lot of fish. All right. <laughs> when we come back, more of your phone calls. Lines open right now, 877-792-1090 or 858-457-1090. And a lot more reports, a lot more information. You're going to hear from Dave with the fishdope.com report. More Let's Talk Hookup coming your way right here on the Mighty 1090. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. Van Warmer resorts have become a destination for travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. My Angler H2O. I will scent my lure with pride. And hope my boss doesn't notice the tan. I will outmaneuver drought-exposed sunken boats and outlast the hard-fighting largemouth bass. I will save water at home for better fishing out here and always 
always wear my life jacket. What's your H2O? Tell us at BoatCalifornia.com. The California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways reminds you to wear it, California. It's time to get excited about fishing, and Point Loma Sport Fishing has everything you'll need. They offer half-day and three-quarter day trips daily, perfect for families and the novice or seasoned fishermen. Point Loma Sport Fishing also offers overnight to multi-day trips, targeting the best of seasonal catches. Visit their website at pointlomasportfishing.com where you can purchase tickets online and get more information on the trips available. Or call 619-223-1627. XSRS 1090 AM, Rosarito, Baja California. You're listening to the home of the Padres. Padres are playing some kind of baseball. San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Information is the key to success, and inside information is even better. When it comes to fishing, inside information is critical, and that's what FishDope.com delivers. FishDope.com really does help you catch more fish and save fuel. FishDope.com is the only SST service with a satellite oceanographic PhD on board, the only fish-finding service with a spotter plane. You get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. FishDope.com boasts the largest code group anywhere, covering sport boats, commercial boats, and private boaters. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. What I'm telling you is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, good luck. Membership costs less than 40 gallons of gas for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, stay tuned for the special code to save $20 on a Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. Fisherman's Landing has been the choice of sport fishing anglers for decades with the largest fleet of long-range boats worldwide. Complemented by Southern California's finest charter and open party fleet. Now is the time to book your long-range trips and charters, plus half-day trips aboard the Dolphin. Go to Fisherman'sLanding.com and see trip availability and even book your trip online. Stop by or call Fisherman's Landing in San Diego and book now at Fisherman'sLanding.com. Summer has finally arrived, bringing warmer waters our way. And you know what that means. The Offshore fishing this season could be one of the best ever. And speaking of best ever, have you seen the new 2015 Ford F-150? It's the most advanced F-150 ever, which is even more good news for fishermen. One of my favorite features is the available 360-degree camera. It lets you see everything around you, which really comes in handy when you're trying to launch on a crowded dock. It's also the first truck ever to be built with military-grade aluminum alloy. That means the new F-150 is up to 700 pounds lighter to accelerate faster and stop quicker. It also hauls more and tows more. And get this, it does it all more fuel efficiently. I highly recommend taking one out for a test drive. The new F-150 is the best thing to happen to fishermen in San Diego since the barbed hook. So stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. <laughs> 